Well, I think it's a massive privilege to even be considered into this group of alumni that we've seen that have won these awards. I guess you're the sum of all your experiences um, and I wouldn't be sitting here today, um, nor would Will, probably without the influence of our parents. Um, so we both come from migrant backgrounds or our parents are migrants, we're first generation Australians and seeing the heartache and toil that you know they've gone through and the, the privilege position that we were in to be able to go through university as a first generation in our families to be able to do that um, it's it's quite humbling for us we met in the quad no where was it the quad been? no yeah. it would have been matthew's theater matthew's theater matthew's theater back at the lecture hall uh my name was Rob, his name was Will. <laughs> and we were the two jigsaw puzzle pieces that didn't quite fit. So we tended to sit at the back of the lecture theater. It wasn't until about maybe eight years after that, that still as best mates coming together, mm. realizing there's a really big opportunity for us to solve with logistics and e-commerce. And then it was from that we put two and two together and came up with the idea of launching a new business, which is where we are today with Ship It. Yep. Yeah. So it was 2014 that I had bought a vacuum cleaner from Masters, which is the which was the competitor to Bunnings. Mm. Having having a really bad shipping experience, buying online, um, I got it delivered to my house, and no one was home. I asked them to leave it there; they wouldn't leave it there. I asked to pick up on weekends; they were closed. But the solution that they had was to deliver it to my office at PwC at the time. And we're talking about a two by two meter mail room. I'd come downstairs and the mail room man was like, what are you delivering this huge vacuum cleaner here for? And like double clicking on that, I asked him like how much freight goes in from a like personal perspective versus a work perspective. And they said one in two deliveries are delivered for like personal artifacts. Hmm. And I picked up the phone and I said to Rob, hey, I've got this great idea. Like maybe we can fix this problem. Yeah, I think it wasn't a phone, it was a beer. And over that <laughs> beer, we started talking. I said, well, I'm sitting on five missed delivery calling cards and have no idea what they correspond to. So I guess I gotta go there this Saturday and wait in line and pick it up. Suffice to say, we've not solved the problem yet. Uh, but what we have done is we've connected retailers to a suite of courier companies and we're the secret source that sits in between to basically pick the right courier companies for the job and handle all the communications to the end customer um, to help that retailer really own the experience of that delivery from cart to doorstep. Oh, we've stuffed up oh, heaps, heaps of times, heaps of times. We've said the wrong thing to people, we've hired the wrong people, we've fired the wrong people, we've um, made the wrong investments, we've made the right investments, but nothing like, stands out as huge. Like over committing to things where we shouldn't yeah. have committed to them. Like we had all of our technology infrastructure in the US we had to move that all over to Australia and that like we had to do that in a week. I guess it's it's kind of looking at those things in hindsight. At the time you think you're making the biggest mistakes. Like when we launched the business, the product wasn't ready and we went out to our first customer who was like, you know, obliging enough to let us in and let us, you know, put our plug in on their website. And the moment we went in there, you know, it brought the whole website down. And for 24 hours they couldn't make a sale. And that was a holy crap moment for both of us where we didn't know what to do mm. but then we learned from that mistake and we're like okay how can we avoid that happening again but you know you just got to roll with those things um, and not every day you're gonna have all the answers and even the really successful people have had so many failures um, yeah it's kind of par for the course if you're entrepreneurial it means that you need to commit and committing means think about that problem that you want to solve. Is it a problem you're going to wake up out of bed every single day for at least the next 10 years of your life to be happy to solve? This is going to become your life and it's going to become your reason for existing for a period of time. Be prepared to lose sleep, relationships and money for that problem. And if it's worth it, go hell for leather. I think the biggest thing that you taught me was don't ask, don't get. Yeah. So just be explicit with what you need and you might get it. <laughs> so that's worked in all ways from getting VIP passes to events where we could drum up new business before we even had a business. It's gone so far as to get us funded. It's gone so far as to get us new customers. And it's really just having that tenacity every day to just stretch beyond what you're doing. Mm -hmm.